Hello and welcome to a very special Hollywood Wargaming video, one that is very much off the script, unplanned, and impromptu. And this is of course in reaction to Games Workshop announcing 9th edition dropping for 40k. Now I know this channel's content has not revolved around Warhammer since its conception recently, but Warhammer is the game that got me back into the hobby, and I jumped in a few months prior to the announcement of 8th edition. In fact, I think it was three days after I bought my first box, when 8th edition was announced and I decided to skip over learning the 7th edition rules altogether and hold out until 8th before I bought any of the literature. And while 8th edition was a great way to get back into the hobby, when I made the jump to bolt action, I almost immediately fell out of love with Warhammer, and since taking the dive into Star Wars Legion, I don't really see myself going back anytime soon. But the announcement of a new edition is big news in the hobby community, and I wanted to make a video talking about what I did and what I didn't like about 8th edition, and what I think 9th edition may need to do in order to win some people back. And all of this is going to be laced with just general speculation based off of the previews we recently got. So first of all, 8th edition obviously very heavily streamlined, making the hobby very accessible to new players. However, it did not take very long before you started to feel like you were playing the same matches over and over and over again when you played Warhammer 40k. And that's because the main problem with 8th edition, in my opinion, and I think one that many others will share sentiment with, is that the game was a little bit too streamlined and sanded down on edges that didn't necessarily need to be sanded down on. And after you wrapped your head around the generic rules of Warhammer and how, you know, strength interacts with toughness and all those sorts of things, it became this very, very linear and obvious mathematical equation in which you could tell a unit was going to be good or not based on their stats on paper alone. And while that's something you can do with almost every war game out there, the fact that Warhammer 40k was so streamlined in every aspect of the game, meaning those battlefield variables that would impact that meta crunching and throw you off balance, just weren't present on the tabletop. You knew your weapon profiles, you knew your range, and all you really had to take into consideration is the generic toughness profiles of enemies, the distance they'd be engaging you at, and a potential minus one for cover. And really, that just made a lot of units in 40k obsolete. And many of those units you could tell were obsolete just by looking at their profiles and doing some quick math. No tabletop experience or commander skill needed. And for a long time, I was saying that Warhammer 40k needed to bring back two things to make the game complex enough to allow other units to be viable. The first of which is directional armor on vehicles. Having vehicles that have different defensive profiles depending on how they're positioned on the battlefield greatly alters how they interact with other units and how they engage on the tabletop. My best example of this and how it would add a positive complex element to the rules of Warhammer is the Tau Piranha, a unit that I have never seen on the tabletop once. And that's because it really did fill out this very niche, unique role, being a light skimmer with high mobility that could flank around and engage enemy armor from the rear. Something that, to my knowledge, was very much an option in previous editions. But with the epic streamlining of 8th edition, the Piranha more or less completely lost its battlefield identity, and therefore was no longer a viable unit in relation to its points. And I want to emphasize here that not every unit has to be competitive, but at least should be viable. Something that can perform uniquely on the battlefield for its designated role, in order to justify its existence. The next rule that I always wanted re-implemented into 8th edition was scattering or the potential to scatter off targets when deep striking units. Now I know people aren't a fan of having their dreadnought drift off the table and disappear from the match as a casualty, and I'm not condoning for something like that, but I think the rigidness to deep striking was a big negative in 8th edition overall. Deep striking should be a sort of risk reward scenario, and having your units reliably drop in by your target, 9 inches away every turn, ended up getting really old really quick. It also made for this more homogenized use of certain weapons, i.e. plasma guns, because they benefited better due to that rapid fire range during deep strike. And you would never be deep striking flamers or melt-a-guns due to that basic streamlined math crunch, where plasma guns are always going to come out on top. And because of things like that, I think 8th edition in the long run ended up punishing people who tried to get creative with the game. And honestly, it was very hard to build fluffy, fun lists. Because the number crunch was always there, it was always obvious, and there were so few tabletop variables to persuade you to say, maybe this will work this time. Maybe I could throw my enemy off. 
And because of that, the more you played 8th edition, the more it felt like you were treading the same old water. So those two basic examples I just covered, vehicle facing directions and potential scatter on deep striking, are mechanics that could be implemented relatively easily and would bring back layers of complexity to the game. And those are just examples of things that you could bring back or implement to reintroduce those battlefield variables back into the game. But those are just examples, and if you guys have any similar simple rules that could be reintroduced to the game to reintroduce those quote-unquote battlefield variables, please leave them in comments below. I'm curious to see what things you guys would implement to bring depth back into the 40k tabletop. But that leads me into another problem I have with 40k, and this might be one that precedes 8th edition, and that's the fact that in order to have your army play differently or give you a different experience on the battlefield, you need to invest a lot of time and money into buying new units to put on the battlefield and into your list. And not just one or two new units, I mean a whole slew of them. Because in 40k, in order to leverage those statistics, you need to field your units in mass. So you can't just buy one Lehman Russ tank, you need to buy three. That's very much in stark contrast to Star Wars Legion, where I can buy one $12 commander upgrade that completely changes how my entire game is played. It's a business and game model that for me as a customer was just unsustainable over the long run, and I think having to field X amount of units in order to have them be viable and have an impact on your army is why people have massive painting backlogs sitting on their shelves. It's something I caught myself doing, and really I'm not happy about the fact that to this day I have old Warhammer models that I'm waiting to liquidate. Meanwhile, even in games like Bolt Action, I can take my little peaked cap officer and say I'm running him as a major this game, and throw an extra LMG in with my grenadier squad and say that they are veterans this round. This is something that you just cannot do with Warhammer. And in 8th edition, if you're not fielding units in numbers, you're not levying those very basic streamlined statistics, and you will almost guaranteed lose to someone who is. And to me, that really goes against the whole fun factor that got me into Wargaming in the first place. Warhammer 40k is also severely lagging behind in the activation systems that most modern wargames have adopted. Star Wars Legion and Bolt Action both have very intuitive activation systems that play into the meta of the game, how you build the lists, and engage players on both sides during the match, regardless of who is currently active. And while I know everyone wants to be original and unique in their own way, and no one wants to say that they're ripping off some stale old World War II game, Bolt Action's activation system is incredibly fluid, simple, easy to learn, and so, so engaging. No more do you have those turns where people just kind of check out, look at their phones, start talking to someone else, and then you have to say, hey, hey, uh, you have three armor saves, minus one. And then they toss three dice and go right back to their conversation with someone else outside of the game. In my opinion, the I go, you go system of traditional Warhammer is completely dead in Wargaming. Almost every game you see now is coming out with alternating activations to keep players engaged. And despite Warhammer 8th Edition being shiny and new, they really, really missed the boat on that one. And while they did implement that into Kill Team, it was a pretty rudimentary version of that, and I was hoping that was just them testing waters for future systems, but I haven't seen anything mentioning alternating activations yet. And I will be quite honest, I don't think I will come back into Warhammer until that is a thing. Unless you're playing very casual matches with very good friends, people just completely check out when it's not their turn. And to me, that really just sucks the fun out of playing. I know not everyone who plays Wargaming or Warhammer cares about immersion, and I can't really say I care that much about immersion myself, but nothing breaks my investment in the match I'm playing, more so than an opponent who is completely disengaged. Warhammer 8th Edition also did have some sort of retrofitted rules onto units to make them more balanced that I really wasn't a fan of how they were implemented. The prime example, and maybe the first example of this, was the grinding advanced special rule added to the Lehman Russ that took them from zero to hero overnight. And for me, when I'm playing on the tabletop, the rules a unit has are representing actions they are performing on the battlefield. So when a warp spider has a 3 plus invulnerable save due to quick reflexes, I imagine him teleporting and maneuvering around the battlefield so fast that the human eye can't even catch up with him. However, when a Lehman Russ starts doubling its rate of fire due to just driving forward a few inches, it begs the question why every other vehicle in the game can't all of a sudden take advantage of this same idea. And I'm not quite sure if that's going to make sense to everyone listening to this, 
but in my head it does and I hope I explained it well enough, where I want my rules and stats to be representative of what those little men are doing on the battlefield, not extra retrofitting headcanon to justify their point cost. We saw this show up again later with things like Bolter Discipline, where all of a sudden a unit was just getting this random special rule tacked onto them to boost their performance, rather than have them adjust their point costs, which is arguably the more appropriate fix. But the reason that fix wasn't applied to these units in 8th edition again harkens back to that hyper-streamlined mathematical crunch where one tick in the wrong direction of points or strength is going to send a unit way more viable than every other counterpart on the battlefield. On top of that, with the chapter approved coming out so frequently, there also became a lot of literature and upkeep for 8th, which was supposed to be a streamlined edition. And again, despite being the shiny new Warhammer, we found ourselves paying 40 bucks every few months for new books that we had to take with us to the game store, rather than having digital downloads and PDFs. So by the time 8th edition ended, it wasn't really that streamlined edition that it started as, and it became this sort of retrofitted, power-creeping edition where the rules were hitting you as fast as you could digest them. Something that I just was not a fan of, and that really did nudge me out of the hobby. And while 8th edition initially seemed like this very strong base where they could just sort of build the game off of, we kind of blinked and now it's already over. And I think Games Workshop really did kind of drop the ball when it came to expanding on the rules for 8th edition and building on top of the existing content. But despite all those problems I just listed, I think 8th edition was a good change for 40k, and one that could serve as a base for a very, very good potential set of rules. And I'm hoping with 9th edition, they will have learned their lessons from 8th, and apply the best of the things we had in 8th, and steer the rule set in a more appropriate direction. And it seems like they are doing that for the most part. They have discussed about having more specific terrain features on the battlefields, meaning your boards will have a greater impact on how you play. Now, I can kind of interpret this in one of two ways. It's either going to be like Age of Sigmar, which is a little too gimmicky for terrain in my opinion, and won't add that needed battlefield depth. But alternatively, this could be a total rework of the environment in which you play on, which could address that lack of battlefield variables that I discussed earlier. They are also finally switching over to digital codexes, and it seems like if you buy the hard copy of the codex, you will get a code to download it, which will be updated every time the codex and rules are fact. And while this is absolutely fantastic news, it is a little too late for me to give them a lot of applause for doing this. I mean, codexes were out of date with their content by the time they were released in 8th edition. It was pretty unacceptable in my opinion. So hopefully that all comes to an end. I'm all for being able to buy a hard copy and getting a digital download. That is perfectly fair in my opinion, but with 8th edition ending in the blink of an eye while Codex is just released a month ago, this feels like something that GW really kind of had to do here because I don't think anyone would have been willing to spend more money on literature from them if that were the scenario. Those chapter approved books are not cheap and they are pretty light on content if you're buying them just for one faction. And I think it's a business model that they realized they were starting to kind of abuse. So it's good to see them change that. There's also other minor things that they mentioned here and there, such as infantry units not being able to tie up vehicles, which again ties in with my philosophy of units operating on the battlefield and every movement and action representing something they would be doing in a war. So that's definitely a change that gives me the impression that GW is going in the right direction with their rules. However, there was one thing that really did worry me in that James Workshop video, and that's when they mentioned more command points. And if I'll be quite honest, I think command points are a really unhealthy crutch that 40k is kind of hobbling into this new era of wargaming with. When you compare stratagems to things like command cards in Star Wars Legion, or even stuff as simple as Snap 2s in Bolt Action, it's this kind of generic Soylent style flavor that they're injecting into the game to try and give different factions more flavor and uniqueness. And they really end up crutching on very gimmicky mechanics that usually end up being just kind of mediocre and irrelevant or very, very cheesy and gotcha mechanic-like. Perhaps they will find different ways to implement them and use them in 9th edition. But if command points and stratagems work the same way they worked in 8th and they're just dialing it up to, you know, 20 stratagems per game, I think we may very much be going into a one step forward, two step back scenario. 
And honestly, I don't think I'm alone when I say that the whole spend one command point to reroll a die is a bit counterintuitive to the nature of wargaming. Again, it's something that helps eliminate what little battlefield variables we have, which is the roll of the dice. And I've had many would-be clutch scenarios in the game foiled by the fact that someone can just spend command points and reroll the die. Sure, it feels good when you get to reroll that failed 2 plus to hits. It's pretty eye rolling when your enemy does it right back to you, and you won't feel good about it after the 30th time you've done it. So, I think in the grand scheme of things, stratagems, especially that reroll dice one, might be one of the worst elements of 8th edition, and I don't think I'd be alone holding that opinion. And as things stand currently, to my knowledge, there hasn't been any mention of switching up the activation system in Warhammer 40k. So that means 9th edition will yet again be another I go, you go scenario. But that is speculation, I haven't done all of my research on this, and we don't know everything about 9th edition yet, so that is subject to change. But as things stand, I'm not too curious about getting back into 40k anytime soon. But I still do frequently watch 40k channels, and I will likely watch videos explaining what the rules for 9th edition will be, and if Games Workshop seems like they can take 9th edition, build a more stable and continuing version of 8th edition that reintroduces those battlefield variables, adds more uniqueness to the factions, and eliminates the cheese of 8th, then I definitely may consider returning. I still do like 40k, and I do keep up on the content and new models released pretty frequently. It's just vastly overshadowed by Bolt Action and Star Wars Legion for me at the moment, and I really am not a man to take on too many projects at once. Well, I say that while 30 unpainted Italian soldiers and 30 unpainted Fulcrum Jaeger are sitting on my desk, but you know what I mean. I'm having plenty of fun with Legion and Bolt Action, and I think 40k is going to have to do a lot to kind of upset those two champions for me right now, especially when you consider the overall financial investment that Warhammer requires. However, I am a very big fan of the new Necron line of models, and it's great to see a classic faction get an update without losing their identity. I think Games Workshop is finally starting to realize that they have a solid aesthetic and they need to move their model lines forward, not laterally. And that really is one of the biggest gripes I've had with the Primaris up until this point. While I do like the models, I think they're very cool, they're very fun to paint, and they look absolutely fantastic. They need to drop the old Tactical Marines, they need to drop the goofy names that the Primaris get, just call them Space Marine Tactical Marines, update the kits, and move the line forward. Otherwise, that's how you end up with decades of backlog of unupdated models that still have rules that people are still trying to play. Fortunately, I think the fact that we are getting new bikers and new chainsword wielding Primaris means that Games Workshop is finally embracing that with the Space Marines also. And really, I cannot wait until the day where I can just call them Tactical Marines and not have to say stupid words like Intercessor. So, I hope this video didn't seem too much like I was just beating up on 8th the whole time. I think 8th was a very, very solid way to start an edition. It just kind of spiraled out of control in a very, very poor way, in my opinion, and it really disenfranchised me as a player. But if 9th edition can snap to get all of its issues together, and then proceed deep into a long time standing edition that has a healthy growth and power scale, then who knows, I may return with a shiny new Necron army. But as things stand, I'd rather just sit back, wait it out, and see what happens. But let me know what you guys think below. I know I don't usually post Warhammer content, and most of my subscribers are probably coming here from either the Star Wars Legion subreddit or the Bolt Action subreddit, both of which are very different communities. But I'm sure you guys have at least looked at Warhammer at some point, if not already played it. And I just wanted to kind of vent about 8th edition and why I stopped playing Warhammer, and kind of compare it to my two favorite games that I have going on right now, while giving you guys a bit of a channel update and my intentions in the future. But let me know what you guys think about Warhammer. Have you played it before? Which game do you prefer? How does it stack up against Star Wars Legion or Bolt Action in your opinion? To me, Star Wars Legion is way more cutthroat and interactive, something that Warhammer is trying to emulate with those stratagems, but not doing a great job at it. Meanwhile, Bolt Action is just much more streamlined in an efficient way that is more balanced, fair, fun, and reliable to players all around. And I feel like 40k is trying to strike a middle ground between both and just not doing a fantastic job at it. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you like this video, go ahead and consider hitting subscribe. 
consider turning on notifications and if you guys are coming here from a warhammer background and you don't know anything about star wars legion or bolt action consider subscribing i do do videos on unit reviews here but i want to do some more vague and general videos on what i do and don't like about each game system and why you may like it and i think branching out beyond 40k is going to give you a different perspective on wargaming even if you don't sort of abandon it the way i did and keep it as your mainstay game i think it's healthy and refreshing but that's enough rambling for this video, guys. I hope you enjoy the content. Again, leave comments what you think about Warhammer versus other games. And until next time, take care.